It, so a mate of mine, Doug Preston, has been sending me through an awful lot of stuff on thermocouples and thermopiles. And they're really interesting because you have to do, well, basically jack with them. You just put them somewhere, there's going to be a heat difference and you're going to generate electricity, which is really, really cool. But of course, there's a problem with them. They're, they're relatively expensive for what they are. They're not particularly efficient and the temperature range that they can operate in is a bit limited, but they're still fascinating. And here's one. Now it's printed with a code on the side, TEC1-12706. All it actually means is the T is uh, thermoelectric for the element, the C is its size, which is standard, the 1 means one layer, which is what we've got here, 127 means the number of junctions that are in there, which I'll explain in a minute, and 06 is the amps. So the specification is actually written on this, and it not being so great means that there's one of two ways you can go with it. The first one is to look at the perfect material that will do an awesome job and not need that much. That would be great. The other one is to make it so stupidly simple and easy and cheap that you could make a billion of them and get what you want. Because this thing relies on a curious effect. If you heat something, the electrons on that will move. They'll actually move from the hot to the cold. They just do it all by themselves because we can't notice it because you usually do it in a metal and that's amazingly conductive. So what you want is you want it to move right away from the hot side, but you want those electrons to be trapped, have nowhere to go and not be able to cycle back. You want to get them out. So what they normally do is they put two materials together that have different properties. So it's got to be good with heat transfer, but relatively poor in electrical conductivity. And if you bang two of those together, you get exactly what you want. The electrons heat up, they cross over the junction, and they're pushed to one side, more preferably if they can't return. And of course, we have a material that will do exactly that, and that's a semiconductor. So when you put two semiconductors together, the electrons can only flow one way. It's like a valve. And that's what's in here. In here are two semiconductors laid up with a hot side and a cold side. Incidentally, the printing usually indicates the cold side. When you heat the hot side, the electrons are pushed and they can't return because it's a semiconductor. But you can't heat these to more than a couple of hundred degrees, so you basically melt them. You can get higher temperature ones, but that's the way it is with them. And of course, there's a huge search for a better material that will do that. As I say, loads of materials do that. Semiconductors do it in a restricted temperature range, but lots of metals will do it. For example, canthal. Canthal is the stuff you find in a um, furnace. Relatively resistive, great for the heat transfer. Combine that with something like steel, and you get yourself a thermopile, a thermocouple. Stick a loads of those together, and you get what's called thermopile. So this is basically a thermopile. There's a ton of research going on in that. However, I also have here all I need to make one. A couple of pencils and a piece of paper. Now these junctions don't normally produce a huge amount. You're talking about, oh, this will be something around 400 microvolts per degree of temperature. Now, these pencils are HB and 6B. So the 6B is really soft. It's predominantly graphite. The HB is quite hard and has about 50% of clay in there. And that has an effect on the conductivity. And from these things, we can actually produce our own thermocouple. Okay, so that side is drawn with the 6B, little angle in it. That side's drawn with the HB, and they meet right at that point there. Now, we've got it reading volts on the meter, and you'll see it's reading about 149 millivolts. Now, watch what happens when I touch it with my finger. Here we go. Isn't that awesome? Take my finger off. Put my finger on. <laughs> now, granted, that might be the moisture in my finger, so let's put a bit of plastic on and do the same thing. Isn't that awesome?
Okay, so I got that from this research paper. And what they suggest is putting a bit of tape over the top of it to protect it from being rubbed off. And they also reckon they get seven microvolts per degree centigrade, which is not a huge amount. But I did just draw it with a pencil on a bit of paper. Now, of course, to be useful, we need millions of those junctions on a piece of paper. And if we were in the Victorian age, that wouldn't be a problem. We could just get some ten-year-olds and pay them a penny a day. These days, of course, for some weird reason, we're not allowed to do that. Still trying to understand why. But we're not. So the next step would be to print them. We're using two different grades of graphite pencil. Could we use two different grades of carbon ink to actually print these? And wouldn't you know it, this research paper has done exactly that. So they used commercially available all carbon inks and produced a thermocouple. Then they went and produced a whole load of thermocouples in junction, which is, of course, a thermopile. And once you've got a thermopile, you've got energy generation. Now, I know that the generation at each point is tiny, but we're talking about pencils and paper. And it's nothing that isn't being investigated. It's been investigated a lot. They're looking at putting carbon into clothes so that you can wear your own charger for your phone. <laughs> and it's nothing more than a carbon and works on the difference between the ambient and your body. This is just so exciting. People are doing this stuff but haven't quite put it together yet and it's there to do. We're not talking about exotic materials, we're talking about free access research paper materials you can go and get to the local station at, draw enough of them, print enough of them, and you will be generating your own electricity just from the ambient around you. That's what's exciting. It's very accessible to anybody who wants to just go there and pick it up and try it. The world is your oyster. All you have to do is reach out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.